very common question that I get asked as a pediatric sleep consultant is, does my baby need a schedule? And the short answer is yes. Babies and toddlers thrive off of consistency and schedules and predictability and it's literally human nature to do better on a schedule. During the first few months of your baby's life, you don't need to worry about a schedule, but once your baby is over that one to two month mark is when I start following the eat play sleep routine. So that means that on a cyclical basis, you are having your child eat and then play and then sleep and then eat and then play and then sleep. And that in itself is a routine that will help establish your schedule. You won't be following a by the clock schedule when your child is just under six months old, but to prepare for having a consistent schedule, you will be following wake windows. And in following these wake windows, you will have consistency and predictability in what your day is going to look like. And before we even talk about what your daily schedule is going to look like, the most important thing is your daily wake up time. So as opposed to bedtime, which is when most parents have that mentality of they need to go to bed by 8 p.m. every single day, when your child is under six months old, your bedtime is not as important as your morning wake up time. That morning wake up time is setting the tone for the day. So that is going to be the most important to be consistent. So let's say for example that your kid is waking up at 7 a.m. You need to make sure you keep that consistent every single day. If you did seven o'clock some days, eight o'clock other days, nine o'clock other days, then the rest of their schedule is going to be completely thrown off. Everything relies on that morning wake up time. That's going to set the tone, it's going to help set their circadian rhythm, and their body will know what to expect and when they need to produce melatonin and when they don't. In addition to following the eat, play, sleep routine, you need to make sure that you have just general routines throughout the day. Now you may have a meal routine, how you prepare and administer your child's meal. For example, if they're eating solids, maybe you put them in the high chair, they play with some toys while you prepare the food, and then you take the toys away, and then you give them the food and you feed them, or they feed themselves, however you choose to go about that journey. You have those routines, and then afterwards they know that they are going Going to wash their hands, get down and play for a little bit longer, and then go down for a nap. Those routines are also going to help establish your schedule. The other important kind of routine to have in your scheduled day is nap time routine and a bedtime routine. They should be exactly the same every day. Now I'm not saying your nap time routine needs to be what your bedtime routine is, but your nap routine should be the same nap routine for every single nap. Your bedtime routine should be the same exact routine for every single bedtime. Another way that you can help establish your daily schedule is by associating the daytime with daily activities and the nighttime with night activities. I know it is so easy to just hermit up in the house when you have a new baby and not really go anywhere. And especially given the pandemic that we just went through, it can be very scary to go out in the world. But I promise you that if you get your kid out and about, maybe you go to a library story time, maybe you go to a playground, maybe you just go for a stroller walk around the neighborhood, getting that exposure to fresh air and vitamin D is also going to help your child's circadian rhythm settle into their schedule. Now remember that as your child gets older, their schedule is going to change, but not by a ton all at once. The biggest change is going to be when they go through that two to one nap transition or the one to zero nap transition. And you can check out those videos over here after you watch this one. The number one rule when it comes to establishing a schedule is to be patient and consistent. So if you are changing your schedule, maybe you've never had a schedule and maybe it's time to get on a schedule and the first couple days it doesn't go very well, remember that it takes adult humans 21 days to establish a habit. So when we're changing anyone's schedule and routines, we need to give it at least a week before we're like, okay, maybe we need to kind of tweak something here or there. So it doesn't need to be like an overnight success, but you will see a lot of improvement over those first about like three to five days. You will see some improvements. But remember that babies are humans and that they are not robots. We can't expect them to sleep every single time we put them in the crib to just go straight to sleep, never cry, never wake up early, never take a little longer to fall asleep. Like that 
that stuff is going to happen and it is so important to expect these things to happen. So now I wanna talk about one of the biggest complaints that I got from one of my clients when I said, you need to be on a schedule and they said, but then I'm never gonna have a life. I told this client, I said, having a schedule is going to give you structured freedom. And she's like, oh wow, what does that mean? That's what I said, when you know exactly what time your child needs to take a nap and exactly what time they need to wake up, you know exactly what time you can plan a coffee date with your girlfriend or dinner out with your family or a trip to the park or the playground or wherever you might wanna go. You will have the freedom to be able to do that because you know your child is on a schedule. So don't give into the hoopla of baby will sleep when the baby is tired because then their circadian rhythm is going to be all messed up and your kid's just never gonna sleep and they're gonna be chronically overtired and then you're just going to have a child who is cranky and grumpy all the time. That is just going to make things a little bit more difficult to enjoy. I will tell you that from the moment that I became a mother or actually it was when my oldest was about two or three months old, I was like, woo, schedules are everything. Like, it was a brain explosion of, wow, this like schedules make the biggest difference in so many different things. And I saw the biggest impact on my child's mood and his ability to play independently, happily, for a longer duration of time because he wasn't overtired. I could literally go on and on and on about how much I support going on a not strict schedule, but an 80-20 schedule. So always follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time you follow your schedule to a T, 20% of the time, YOLO, go live your life, okay? Your kid will get back on schedule because you're following their schedule 80% of the time. Now also when it comes to schedules, it's important to keep in mind that your child is going to go through sickness and teething and all these things, but when you have these schedules, they actually sleep better and they get more restorative sleep when they are going through these transitions because they know exactly what to expect and their body knows what to expect. When their internal clock is confused, it's just going to wreak havoc on all of those big milestones that they're trying to accomplish but they don't know when their body is going to get restorative sleep. Keep those milestones and those regressions and all of those bumps in the road in mind when you have your child on a schedule because sometimes you will have to adjust. And of course, as they get older, their sleep needs will decrease and change. Maybe you're dropping a nap, maybe you're shortening a nap, maybe you're pushing bedtime later. Whatever you're doing, just do it consistently. And if you need help, Hi, I'm a sleep consultant. I can help you make you a customized schedule and help you track the progress as you go through these changes. Now remember that every single baby is unique and what works for one nine month old baby might not work for another nine month old baby. So do not compare your baby to your friend's babies or your neighbor's babies or anybody else in the world's babies. Your family, your child, your baby, your lifestyle, your everything is unique and it may be different than what other people are doing and what works for other people. So please do not compare your child and their schedule and your way of life with someone else's. While one baby may do better with longer wake windows and a later bedtime, you may have a baby who needs shorter wake windows and an earlier bedtime, and that's okay. The most important thing is knowing your child and what they need, and that's what's what, what will work best for your family. And that's where the customization of sleep consulting comes in, and I can always help you. Remember, if you need any help with your baby's schedule or their sleep habits or anything in the realm of baby and toddler sleep, you can always reach out to me, missy at slumberandbloom.com or check out my sleep packages on my website, slumberandbloom.com slash sleep coaching. Don't forget, head down to the description box down below, grab my free baby sleep guide that is going to give you all the information you need to know about getting better sleep without sleep training your baby and keep blooming. Mwah.